So here I've got an ag for Ambi Select. This is the earlier model. Um, and I'll just step you through this briefly on how to take it apart and service it. So I'll just remove the lens. And I'll start with the top cover. Put something through the fork of the rewind. Spin the rewind knob off with your fingers. Nice and simple. But to unscrew this, screw at the end here on the advance. I'm going to use a stiff pair of tweezers. You could use some modified circlip pliers to do the job. See if this is loose. It is. Lift the screw off. The frame counter disc will lift off. This piece operates the frame counter. That will lift off. There's a spacer washer here. That can lift off. And the lever itself should lift off. Might need to wriggle it. That's off. This piece underneath, that lifts off. Make a note of which way that's set. That couples this outer piece here. That's got the return spring for the film advance. The inner piece in the centre, that actually moves the film advance. So it's uh, two different things. Unscrew the collar on the top of the Rewind. I'm using another pair of pliers that circlet pliers that had the tips modified to give me two small flat blades. You could use uh, other tools to do this. This is quite stiff. Not sure why that should be. The collar is aluminium. Aluminium does tend to gall. That's coming off now. It's got a fine thread, it's a bit rough on the threads. Single screw on the top of the top cover here. Top cover should lift off. That's fine. One thing to watch with the top cover is the pin in the middle of the shutter release button. Just a small pin that just sits in the shutter release button. Don't lose it. You won't like that. I'm going to remove the range finder. Three screws hold the range finder to the top of the body. Lift that off. This little spacer washer sits on top of the return, the post here that holds the return spring, the uh, film advance. Go and unhook that spring. If I can get it off its post. Spring is in the game. And something to get a bit more grip on that. The springs here is not wound correctly there. That's better. Unhook that. Watch the spring. It's got a bit of oomph to it. Lift that off. It's a bit tight. I need cleaning. That's the shutter release plunger there, that can come out. That's not in a bad state, sometimes they're very sticky. On the top, I'm going to remove this piece now. Now there's a spring here, I'm going to unhook that. 
put it carefully aside, not fling it into the bushes. There we, there we go. Three screws. That one's loose. Bit of sand in here. This one's loose as well. Lift that guide up off. Now there's two screws here hold this plate in place that holds the cocking rack in position. Lift off that hold down. You better lift that cocking rack out of, out of there now. That's quite sandy. This piece comes off the film advance, that's very sandy. Single screw holds this. This is the interlock for the uh, double exposure prevention. Again, that's a bit grubby. Here, yeah, the rewind. It's quite a uh, complex arrangement here. I'm just going to pull the bottom spring off first. There's a finer spring at the bottom, and it just sits in a slot, and it's just there to provide a detent so that the rewind just a rewind shaft doesn't just drop in or flop about. This is a much stronger spring. It's a bit awkward to get this out and about, so I'm going to lift it up out of the slot. Get that to the top, lift the spring here, and lift that over the top if I can. It's easier to lift this over than it is to try and fight with it and assemble it on the rewind. Then I can lift this off. Three screws hold that bush the top of the camera. Where are we on the camera? Okay, three screws hold this. A lot of these screws are loose on this particular camera. Um, I've just done a couple of ambi selects. It may be that that's a common feature. Loose screws. It's um, otherwise fairly unusual with cameras. Okay, so that's all we need to do at the top for the moment. At the back I can take out the rewind shaft. And that's got an inner and outer section. I'll pull those apart for cleaning. Have three screws. Hold the shutter assembly into the body. They may be covered with black paint, they may be completely uncovered, they could even be heavily disguised with black wax. Oh, that's not coming loose, it's going to need a bit of solvent. I just put some acetone on those two screws to soften that uh, black paint. But it's not helping. They are exceptionally reluctant to come out. Let's lift out the one that I did get loose. Just check this for any uh, clues. There's nothing particularly unusual about that. It doesn't look like it's had thread locker or anything on it. I think it's just the black paint that's been put around the heads of these screws has effectively glued them in place. And they do not want to move.
think I might need to use uh, more brutal techniques. I'm going to give these a, a tap. It's not moving. No. More solvent and more patience perhaps. Well I got one loose and I did it by using my biggest screwdriver and some pliers on the shaft of the screwdriver and using the pliers to provide the torque to get the screw loose. It's worked. I'd like to say the head of the screw was pretty and undamaged, but that would not be true. It's not as bad as it might be. The main thing is the shutter is now loose. And we'll lift straight off the body. So let's have a quick look at the body. Here's our coupling for the rangefinder. I'm going to remove the cam from the top. That screw is a little bit loose, not too bad. Unhook that, lift off the spring. Now, this uh, lever here, this screw is the top pivot screw, if I back that up it will release this arm from there, from that pivot and I should be able to swing it over and swing it out. Four screws in the body here hold this plate in place. One of them holds a spring at the bottom, take note of that. This has to come out because there's a lot of sand down here in the body. I want all of that out. Make sure I've got my four screws and their spring. Now the screws up here in the upper body are inclined to foul this plate as I try and lift it out. There's one screw there in particular, I'm going to back that up a bit. I can see that that's an eccentric, that's a handy thing. Okay. Let's see if I can lift this plate out. Yeah, it's going to come. And now I can lift out the cocking piece for the shutter. And you can see the sprocket shaft here. That's a bit sandy down there. I'm going to have to clean out all of that crap. And then I should be good to go. Anywhere in the body where there isn't uh, obvious contamination from grease, you can use a dry paintbrush to flick any loose sand and dust out of the body. And just use a blower to puff it away. At the top in places like this where it's obviously covered in grease, that's not suitable. You'll end up just making a mess of your brush. That has to be cleaned with some solvent on a cotton bud or cuter. So I'm going to do that. I've got that all cleaned to my satisfaction now. I'm quite happy I've got rid of all the loose sand and dust out of there. And now that body can go be put aside while I clean up the components and pop them back in. So the first thing I want to do is clean up this little gear, make sure all the grit and stuff is off here, and gather the four screws up, 
and put all this back in place. First I've got to put this gear back in place. So I'll put a, put a bit of synthetic grease on the on the rear face and down in the hole. Pop that in place. This thing has to be timed correctly to the cocking rack at the top of the camera when we get to that stage, but at the moment we're not at that stage. So I'm just putting this baffle back in place. It holds that gear in position. It's not sitting down in position. I've got to get that tucked under there. It's got to be tucked under that bush for the shutter release. You have four black screws. I'll get those in position. One over here holds the spring, so that can go in last of all. I'll get the other three in first. With the other three screws in position but not yet tightened down, I can take my return spring for the rangefinder coupling. Let's pop that screw through the spring. And get this lined up with the screw hole. That's better. Okay, so all of the screws are in place now. Tighten the four screws up. Now I can put the yoke back in for the rangefinder coupling. So I'm using a bit of molybdenum paste here, I'll put that on the bottom pivot. I'll apply some into the hole in the top pivot. Now I know from experience if I start with the arm in this position, I can swing it over, get the bottom pivot in position as I straighten the arm up. There it is. It rests on the return spring. And at the top of the camera, this screw is the pivot for the upper part of that arm. Just going to line that up. Not lined up yet. That looks hopeful. Okay, so the rangefinder coupling is all back in place. Just make sure this screw at the top is tight. That's all that's involved in that. And a cam at the top of the camera for the rangefinder. And put a wipe of molybdenum paste around where that pivots. Making sure I've got this round the right way. Hook it spring into position. Drop that on there. held in place with a single screw, got a large flat head on it. And hook its return spring back over the post. And you can see as I press on the bar here that the rangefinder coupling on the shutter will work you'll see that it swings this wedge-shaped cam across which couples with the rangefinder. I'm going to put the range, the rewind knob back on, or the bush for the rewind knob. That's all been cleaned to get rid of the dust and the sand and so forth. This is held in with three screws. Here 
as usual get all three screws fitted and once they're all fitted then you can tighten them down but not before if you just put the first screw in and tighten it right up you can be pretty much guaranteed that you'll have trouble lining up the hole for the second or third screw now here I've got the slots in the back of this post towards the end of the camera tighten those three screws up that's good now taking our rewind shaft There's an inner and an outer section here. They need to be cleaned so that they'll slide and I need to put some lubricant on there so that they'll slide. And there's also a very fine spring. It provides a bit of controlled friction on this rewind so that when it's, it can be pulled up into position or pushed back down and it'll stay there. So I'm just making sure that's present and correct and it's in the slot. I'll apply some grease to the inside of the rewind. There's a tab on here that has to line up with a slot visible here and you have to get that little spring compressed so that it'll fit in there neatly which I'm trying to achieve here with a pair of tweezers Yeah, it doesn't really want to go. Hang on, I'm halfway there. Just popped out of place. That spring has to remain in its groove on the inner piece. Yeah, it's just moved into place. Tuck it down that last little bit. That's in place. Make sure the tab's lined up correctly. No, something's too tight here. That spring shifted. Yes, the end of it's tucked up, it's popped out of its groove. I have to straighten that up. The yeah, spring's just the end of it's bent up. So it's not lying in a flat plane, I'll have to straighten that out. Well after five minutes of mucking about I've got that all together. So that's good. Now, this is quite a high friction area here. I'm going to put some leptin and paste in those grooves.
I'll lubricate. Well, I've already done the bush, and the, no, I haven't done the bush and the rewind yet, so I'll do that. So I'll just lubricate the bush here with a bit of synthetic grease. And then the rewind shaft can slide straight up inside. We have two springs. Now the lower spring, this goes in the lower slot. I've just lost my shaft, that's okay. This has to be stretched around here. Might need two pairs of tweezers to do this neatly. And that's it, and into the lower slot. Now I can put my rewind shaft back in position. Might need to pull that spring back a bit to allow that to pop through. Yeah, that's good. Now the upper spring. This arrangement. It's fitted like that. That straight bar has to go into the top slot. So getting this on here is always an act. Stretch that spring out and over that spring out and over. That should slide down till it gets to that groove. And it does. That's our spring in place. And that's a very stiff detent. And it will stop the shaft from ever dropping back in basically. So our rewind there is all back in place, lubricated and ready to go. I want to turn my attention to the advanced part and the cocking rack. Alright, some more reassembly. I'm putting a smear of synthetic grease on here and some in the centre where it runs on that post. Yep. I'll run some around those cam surfaces there. That should be good. And this piece goes on in this position to pull that little ratchet tab out so it sits in position correctly on the top of those two cams. Let's put some lubricant, some synthetic grease on this rack. This, uh, rack. Some on the pivot where it sits on the arm. And that can be dropped into position. I'm going to muck around here a bit to get that spring in position correctly. Get that on that post. Now I'm just checking the position of this. As it happens, that looks pretty good to me. I think that's in the correct position anyway. It's just a matter of getting the timing correct. So this piece is sitting about there. It's at about the uh, something after the 11 o'clock position, if you like, looking from the front. Here's our hold down. It's held in place with two screws. Make sure both are in position and tighten them up. Make sure that arm's why is that arm sitting up? It's, it seems to be under some sort of tension, it's wanting to lift up. I'm not sure why that should be.
might be just its spring action at the top doing that. Now the guide bush goes on the top so I'm lubricating that with some synthetic grease. Pop that into position. That's held in with three screws. Run those down. I haven't tightened them completely all the way up. I'm just checking the action. Yeah, that's certainly dropped off the post there. Let's lift that back up. Get my rack coupled correctly to the post on the top of that. Advance the shaft part. That's better. Let's stay there. That looks correct. Tighten these three screws up. Exposure prevention lever needs to go 